Good morning. Welcome along to the Sunday Politics here in the West Country. Coming up, whatever happened to the big society? Two million pounds was spent on community organisers designed to get us off our sofas and out into society. But this week, a report claimed David Cameron's big idea has turned into a big flop. Well, we're joined this week by two politicians quite happy to turn up at the uh, opening of an envelope. They are the Bristol Conservative MP Charlotte Leslie and the Greens' first Euro MP here in the South West. That's Molly Scott Cato. Welcome to you both. Let's uh, start, if we could, with petrol prices, which have dipped below a pound a litre in some garages here in the West Country. Uh, Molly, does that please you? I think from an economic point of view, what we need to see with the price of something that's so crucial to our decisions about investment and our personal decisions about transport and so on is less volatility. So I actually think a big dip that may be followed by a big increase is quite problematic. But the principle of cheap petrol? Well, I, as I'm saying, I don't think the principle is about cheap or expensive. I think it's about having a consistent price. And I'd like to see but the government actually trying... But you'd like to see motoring trying... more expensive? No, I'd like to see the government trying to absorb some of the volatility in prices so that but we would know... would you not want to see motoring more expensive? You, you approve of road pricing, don't you? Yes, but I'm trying to explain that actually I think what we need to do is set a, a fixed upward trajectory for prices rather than having prices swinging around. All so right, businesses so they shouldn't dip. They shouldn't dip. I think the government could step in and try and ensure that we have a sort of upward movement but one that's fixed so we know when we're making decisions about transport and companies know when they're making decisions about investment because okay. the swinging around pr for, for, of prices is actually quite problematic. Okay, Charlotte, Leslie, um, in, petrol prices are lower than they have been. They're not cheap, I guess, but they're lower than they have been. That means people are going to use their cars more. Yeah, I think people need to use their cars anyway. I think often people want an excuse not to use their cars, and here in Bristol there's not great public transport to enable them to do so. But, I mean, if, if you're struggling and going to the petrol pump is now cheaper than it was, that's a good thing. Um, and actually, you know, with, with fuel prices going down, it's very good that government doesn't step in and, for example, freeze prices like was being talked about by the Labour, the Labour, Gov uh, Labour Party last year. So environmentally um, you're not too bothered? I think until you find alternatives for people to get about, they are going to need to use their cars. I mean, businesses that need to deliver, they need to transport stuff around, they need to do this. Unless there's an alternative, they're going to be using um, road, transport and petrol. So if we want our economy to go well, it's a good thing that the prices are low. All right. Well, at the last election, the phrase big society was used so much it made it into the dictionary. Today it's barely mentioned, and yet its legacy lives on in an army of community organisers. They were recruited to fire us up into getting involved in our local area. But five years on and two million pounds later, is it time for that regiment to stand down? Here's Charlotte Callan. And determined to build the big society where families and communities... It was David Cameron's big idea. We need that big society spirit, and in building the big society is the big society spirit. Within two years, big society capital... In fact, he couldn't get enough of it. Now, just as we need this big society spirit, that big society spirit, the big society spirit, the big society, the big society is that something different and bold. So what has happened to his big society army and the money set aside to pay for it? Well, these people in Barton Hill in Bristol are the answer. Steve was one of the first community organisers to be recruited. It cost £11,000 to train him up, and he was then paid the living wage. His job in this inner city community was to listen to local residents. One of the best parts was meeting Shakila and all the other residents at Harwood House. Um, we did a listening project going door to door. This is where you use your Yeah, survey. we use our listening survey. Well, it's not a survey, it's a listening questionnaire, really. Um, we find out the kind of things people are happy about, the things they feel good or positive about in their community. It was the residents' dirty washing that was getting them in quite a spin. 86 flats, 86 households in this block, um, three washing machines. Um, so you imagine, like, one street, the terraced street, everyone's got their own washing machine, you know? But in this place... You're not allowed to do that, you've only got three. I've got four kids. In the winter time, when they get sick, it's very hard to win your turn. It's causing people to actually have to fight over resources when, you know, they shouldn't be having to do that, you know. Steve and his volunteer army have won their battle. The council have promised them two extra washing machines. Things are, at last, starting to look up for the residents. 
it's not just the many doors around here in Barton Hill that have been knocked on by the community organisers. More than 44 have been trained up in total and 637 volunteers at a price tag of nearly £2 